Hey yo, what's going on with the viewers of the tube? Tyler here of Chico Crypto coming at you from my backyard for a candid video to start this week. Sorry I wasn't there on Monday, had some stuff to take care of, took a little me day, which is pretty nice. Um, Bitcoin is taking a me day too. It's not doing much. Um, late last week, BTC plunged from where we were at, about 24K, down to 21K, which is proving to be some serious support. It's bounced off of it four times since Friday, bounced off of it Friday, Saturday, not Sunday, but also Monday, and as of today, it bounced off once again. But the title of this video is a Bitcoin bank run. It's just beginning. Well, it's actually been going on, and first we need to understand, you know, what a bank run is. Um, a bank run's a mass withdrawal of assets from a centralized counterparty. Um, traditionally, you know, the word bank run came from cash money and people withdrawing mass amounts of cash. But bank runs can happen with other assets as well. Stonks and crypto assets, um, as well as commodity assets. Um, but... With Bitcoin, it is a mass withdrawal of Bitcoin from a centralized exchange or exchanges. Um, so, the collapse of Celsius and other crypto lenders uh, that happened, you know, the domino effect, um, it's caused people to be weary of exchanges. They don't trust the centralized entities, which, I mean, isn't a bad thing. So this year, seven out of eight months, you guys, there has been a negative outflow of Bitcoin from centralized exchanges. In January, it was about negative 52,000. February, about negative 20,000. March, about negative 71,000. April was a slight negative 9K. And then in May, we did have an inflow. Um, June, about 100, negative 119K. July, about negative 96K. And as of August, um, we've had 65K so far, negative 65K. So seven out of eight months, people are taking their Bitcoin away this is one of the first times in history we have had that um, happen so the price has been going down you know and people are withdrawing what is going on you know is this good or bad well January we started with about 2.35 million BTC on exchanges and as of now we're just over 2 million so is this good or or bad my friends like what does a bitcoin bank run mean well it's good and bad it can be good and bad so let's talk about it bad in the short term so when you withdraw a bunch of bitcoin off of exchanges you know that means the bitcoin on the exchanges the amount of them can lead to big moves in the bitcoin price so i mean it's just like a small amount of Bitcoin so the price can easily move with a whale going in and saying yeah I'm gonna do this you know sell this many Bitcoin you know small you know even smaller whales can affect the price pretty heavily especially when there is you know a reduction of Bitcoin on exchanges you know so in the short term it necessarily isn't good because whale manipulators who are bearish you know can get a bearish trend to take over but in the long term it is great a Bitcoin bank run is amazing because the more larger entities, institutional investors, rich people that get into crypto, I mean, 401ks start accepting Bitcoin to hold them 401ks. That means, you know, these moves, these buys from these investors are going to push the price up much further than if you had, say, 5 million Bitcoin on exchanges. You know, so as of right now, we only have just over 10% of all Bitcoin that are out there 
on exchanges. And if you include the lost Bitcoin, it's less than 10%. It's probably more like seven to eight percent of Bitcoin is only left on exchanges. So we got to, to understand what Bitcoin is going to do. I actually predict that Bitcoin's going to be pretty boring over the next couple of weeks because we have the action coming next month. So inflation data is coming September 13th and then where they're going to, you know, decide what, or tell us, you know, the inflation in August. And then just after that, a week after that, we have the Fed FOMC meeting, which is happening September 21st. So we did have the Fed minutes last week that came out, and this was actually one of the reasons for the market dump. Um, the Fed released their minutes, and in the minutes, you know, they basically said they could continue to be hawkish. They could continue the higher rate raises. Now, everyone thought, you know, because we had lower inflation, you know, last month that came out that, you know, the Fed would become more dovish, you know, but from their minutes, they didn't look like that. So if you look at betting odds right now, betting odds are about 50-50 on whether we're going to have a 75 basis point raise, which is like we've had the last couple of times. So... The markets are pricing that in as of right now. You know, markets don't like uncertainty. When you have odds at 50-50, you know, the markets, they take it as bad. So, yeah, the markets took it as, you know, it's possibly coming and they're already pricing it in. So, in my opinion, the next few weeks are going to be pretty boring in the crypto space. Um, but Chico's content won't be boring um, because I have some good stuff coming up regarding Bitcoin, um, Jack Dorsey, and what they're all doing. I don't want to give too many hints. But now let's talk about them altcoins. Yes, GMX, you guys. That has been a portfolio saver for me. Um, I mean, it reached a high of just above $50, you know, early this year and it you know dumped like most of the markets down to about eleven dollars but as of right now it's sitting over forty dollars you know not that far away from its all-time high and this is for good reason you guys super good reason um 2.3 million in fees was generated from gmx just this week alone um if you check out crypto fees it's a website to see you know which protocols blockchains are producing the most fees and it's sitting in the top five as of right now um, just behind Binance smart chain so this is big you guys because those fees are actually a hundred percent distributed to the stakers um, so you can stake two ways with GMX you can stake with of course just GMX tokens but you can also stake with their liquidity pool token GLP which earns I think 70% um, of the fees while GMX just earns 30% of the fees and actually there was just a hundred um, a thousand ETH buy on GMX just um, a day or two ago so people are starting to catch on about real yield and GMX is the leader in that space. Um, it's sitting at about 128 on CoinGecko. I know it's going to break into the top 100. There's no ifs, ands, ors about that. You know, I'm fully bullish on GMX. Um, another one I'm super bullish on and have been for a while is Centrifuge as they're bringing real world assets into the blockchain and providing real world um, returns. You know, their returns are, are good, you know, but they aren't thousands of percent, you know, they are realistic. So MakerDAO and um, I think it's Huntington Valley Bank. They just provided a commercial loan to them. It's the first time a FDIC, a regulated bank, has taken a DeFi loan. And Centrifuge is in partnership with MakerDAO for the real world assets. Um, so this is massive, you guys. And it's only going to continue. Uh, Centrifuge is a long-term play, you know. Um, it's going to take a while. But eventually, 
in my opinion, it will be in the top 100 too. And finally, I want to talk about a project that's not listed as of right now, but will be coming in within the next um, month or so, and that is Public Pressure. Um, it is a music NFT platform um, and marketplace, and it's built on the Kusama Polkadot ecosystem. The reason I really like Public Pressure in terms of music NFTs is because I don't think music NFTs have had their hype cycle yet, and also the XEM cross-chain communication standard is going to allow these music NFTs to be much more robust and complex than anything that can be built on Ethereum. All right, guys, well, that's a video for today. Um, I have some great videos coming up this week. Appreciate all you guys as always, and I'll see you next time.